Christ. Oh, good. <laughs> it's chubby. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Before our meeting officially begins, we will have an invocation offered by Commissioner Poole, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Lord, thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed on our community. We are here today to continue deciding for the safety and well-being of our citizens. Guide us in all our decisions. All is possible in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Cressy, would you call the roll, please? Ms. Twine? Here. Mr. Lockhart? Here. Mr. Poole? Here. Mr. Murray? Here. Mr. Brady? Here. Ms. Lloyd? Here. Mr. Waddington? Here. Commissioners, you have before you the minutes of our meeting of November 25, 2019. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Waddington. I move that we accept the minutes of the November 25th meeting and dispense with the formal reading. Second. And a motion and second. Discussion? Without objection, motion be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved. We turn to audience participation. Anyone wishing to address any of our legislation tonight, please step to the microphone, share with us your uh, thoughts, name, and address. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Tim Schwanger, 362 Sheffield, Sheffield Way. Uh, just a couple of questions. Both uh, questions pertain to the agreements with uh, Cedar Point Park. The first one is item number two, which is the uh, $2.25 million from the Cleveland Road TIF. Um, my question tonight is how much of that Cleveland Road TIF is, has actually already been uh, accounted for uh, spending wise, uh, it would have been earlier this year, um, the city contracted with EDG uh, consultant group to do the uh, engineering and design and, and easements for the entire Sandusky Bay pathway. And, and that legislation stated that uh, EDG would be paid uh, from various TIF accounts, which it, it really didn't specify which TIF accounts, so maybe we can get an answer on that tonight. The other issue is number three, which is the donation of 30 acres from, again, Cedar Point Park. Um, you all should have received a, a map today, which was attached or was not attached to the uh, uh, supporting documents on the agenda. And the question would be is, you, you see for the engineer, the area that's cross-hatched, it says that the city of Sandusky uh, <coughs> currently owns that property. And the question would be is, do we actually have clear title to that, to that property, or uh, the last I heard a few months ago, it's actually an easement from Metro Parks or from Cedar Point or, or some other entity? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schwager. <coughs> Anyone else? Arlene Thompson. Uh, 1902 Adrian Circle, Sineski. I have a question. In reading through the agenda for tonight, we're entering into, and I think it's, I don't know, some of you may not even remember riding the bus in Sandusky back in the 50s. I do. And it was, you could count on it. Go downtown, catch the boat, go over. And I think it's a great thing that we're doing with STS. I would just like to know with the, each of the entities that we're entering into agreements with, will we be able to or will they be able to monitor the number of riders per entity to certify profit for us or them or if they're a nonprofit, you know, is that a fact? So it's something to, to think about because we're... We're picking up a lot of people, and that's that's super, especially for the older folks that can't drive. But something to think about with entering in that many agreements uh, with SDS. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Anyone else? If not, then we have a uh, we have a proclamation to present to the Qantas Club of Sandusky. If you're the representatives of Qantas would please come forward. Appreciate that. Qantas is a very old uh, and very well-established organization in our community. For those who aren't familiar with them, uh, the proclamation speaks to the particular work that we do. I know you've just celebrated a very uh, significant um, 
um, anniversary, and uh, I, I understand we were invited to that, and uh, I apologize that none of us were aware uh, of that and uh, were able to attend and celebrate with you, but thank you for all the work that you do. So I have a presentation or a proclamation to present. Um, I don't normally read these, but I think this is an occasion where it should be read. Whereas Kiwanis International was founded in 1915 and is made up of men and women who share the challenge of community and world improvement by taking on humanitarian and civic projects which many public authorities are not prepared or able to perform. And whereas the Kiwanis Club of Sandusky was founded in 1919 and its members share a desire and commitment to serve our community and enrich the lives of residents, especially children. And whereas the Kiwanis Club of Sandusky committed to the development of a 200 acre site known as Kiwanis Park, which began at the corner of Cedar Point Drive and First Street in 1965 during its golden anniversary year. And whereas in 1978, the city of Sandusky granted an option to Sandusky Bay Kiwanis Senior Citizens Inc for the purchase of real estate at the corner of East Water Street and Franklin Street for the construction of housing primarily for low and moderate income persons. And whereas in 2018, in honor of the Kiwanis Club of Sandusky's centennial and the city of Sandusky's bicentennial, the Kiwanis Club partnered with the Mylander Foundation and the Firelands Regional Medical Center to build a new shelter, fencing and picnic tables at Kiwanis Park for an investment of over $30,000. And whereas the Kiwanis Club of Sandusky has contributed to the community through projects with Kinship, the Erie County Department of Job and Family Services, at the Sandusky Library, and at Firelands Regional Medical Center. And whereas the city of Sandusky is most grateful and appreciative of the many years that the Kiwanis Club has been in existence and for its service projects and financial commitments to better the lives of the citizens of Sandusky and Erie County. Now, therefore, I, Dennis C. Murray, Jr., President of the Sandusky City Commission, wish to wish the members a joyous 100th anniversary and ask the citizens of Sandusky to join us in congratulating the members for their efforts, commitment, and success. So thank you to all of you. And I stand, you are Heather Gilcrest, the president of a, a local club. I'd like to present this to you. And I know Mrs. Cresser uh, is anxious to get a picture <laughs> so she can put it on Facebook. So uh, thank you for being here. And thank you very much thank for your you service. So we appreciate you for it. Thank you for recognizing our milestone. Well, and we're, we're delighted to. Many more years helping out the city and all the, all the residents. We'll see you in another 100 years, but it might not be. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Commissioners, <coughs> we have a number of different pieces of communication from staff recommending various pieces of legislation. Would someone care to make a motion to accept those? So moved. Second. Then a motion and second. Discussion? Without objection, the motion will be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion will be approved. Commissioners, we have a number of items on the consent agenda. Are there any of those items that you would like to have placed on the regular agenda? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Uh, Lockhart. I'd like to pull B down. B will be removed from the consent agenda. Any other items? Mr. Crestor, would you then present the consent agenda, please? Yes, Mr. President. On the consent agenda this evening, we have item A, which is a transportation agreement with Cedar Point for the Sandusky Transit System. Second item is a transportation agreement with the Erie County Veterans Service Commission for the Sandusky Transit System, an agreement with Ohio CAT for emergency generator repair for the Sandusky Fire Department. Next item is acceptance of two parcels for the city's land bank program, a purchase and sale agreement for 1006 4th Street through the land bank program, a purchase and sale agreement for 1531 Camp Street. And the last one is an annual, the annual payment to the Ohio EPA for the license to operate Big Island Waterworks for calendar year 2020. Mr. is having heard the items on the consent agenda, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Lloyd. I move that we accept the consent agenda in declaring that all ordinances and resolutions AC 
D E F G H um, as drafted and presented to the city commission under the consent agenda shall take effect in accordance with the section reflected in the ordinances and resolutions, whether it be in accordance with section 13 or 14 of the city charter. Second. Then a motion and second. Discussion. Mr. Freitas, I was going to ask you to address the question uh, regard that was that was posed regarding tracking those. Uh, but I want, I want you to hold on. I, we'll, I'll just ask you to, to hold those thoughts and present them to those, those three related pieces of legislation as a whole when we get to that item in the regular agenda. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments, commissioners? Mrs. Crossley, would you poll the commissioners on the motion first? <laughs> Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. <laughs> and now on the ordinances and resolutions. Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Those items are adopted. Mr. Crossley, would you present the new item one, please? Yes, the new item one would be an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into an agreement for transportation services between the city of Sandusky and Sandusky City Schools for services related to the Sandusky transit system for the period of January 1, 2020 through December 31, 2020 and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Twine. I move for the adoption of, of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. second. It's been a motion and second. Discussion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lockhart. Uh, just as you said, I'd like to get a point of discussion on these three pieces of legislation that seem to be the easiest way, and I think you concur. Uh, Mr. Freitas is making her way up. Mr. Freitas, if you wouldn't mind answering the, I guess maybe you could address uh, more broadly the question of how does we track, um, you know, these are, these are all different agreements. They all have different <coughs> economic structures to them. Um, uh, some are unlimited, some are per, per fare. Um, to, could you just address that a little bit, how we know whether this pricing is right for these individual contracts over time? Yes. Yeah, so, um First Transit is our transportation company that we contract with. One of their responsibilities is to track all the passengers' trips. So each month we are given a report on how many passengers rode with, say, uh, serving our seniors or how many rode with cancer services. And so they track all of that. And that part of that is through the software that we use also because the clients are coded um, in the system. And with, like, the Cedar Point contract, they the or the drivers um, track each time a Cedar Point Pass is shown to them. So we know every month how many <coughs> riders that that contract has. So, and ODOT requires us, I mean, there's so much um, record keeping and all that that we have to do, and we have to report those numbers monthly um, to them as well when we do our draws for our contracts, or for our, uh, you know, our grant through them. Mr. Locker. Yeah, and, and that's, are, are you addressing all three, or are you just... I mean, you don't have I guess to. Like, we were kind of just looking. I, I was looking at to see, you know, who our writers are, what we may do potentially to find out who those writers are, and in relation to what the uh, citizen had asked to, you know, how do we figure out the best use of our services? So I guess in reference to the Cedar Point contract, um, like I can. Through November of this year, we have <laughs> transported 116,000 uh, of their employees. Um, and I guess I'm just not sure exactly what, what you're asking, like how we track each individual <coughs> contract. Is that what, or Mr. just? Mr. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. Perhaps uh, at the end of the year, after these contracts are done, uh, and I presume you probably do it, we've just never asked for it. But just something, it's an evaluation that uh, shows um, some performance measures that we can, can decide, yes, this was a good idea, it was a neutral idea, it was successful, or things we could be doing. And I think that's what amounts to just raw numbers of how many people uh, rode the bus. It really doesn't say anything unless we're doing something with the data. It's, you obviously have all the information. Yeah, I have if, all the information. So. I will say that these three contracts that are on here are renewal contracts. 
Um, when I came on board, we looked at some of the contracts that we did have in place that did not make sense. If we were only taking a few people a month, um, it wasn't, it was more <coughs> cost effective for us and for the agencies to just use general public trips for them instead of having a contract. So we do have it kind of whittled down to maybe eight to 10 contracts at the most right now. Um, and so, because we also have to keep a balance where we're satisfying the contracts, but also not letting it decrease service for the general public. So that's something that we're always looking at too, because we can't give preference to the contracts, um, you know, and, and let the other service fail. So, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I think, I, yeah, just to let you know, it's it's a matter of you apparently are doing all that, all the work that's necessary. Uh, when you bring these legislation to the general public, some comment from you, what your evaluation is of them in terms of why we're doing this contract. <laughs> why it's a benefit for the public to do it. Just, you know, a few words that, that indicate the, the work that you've actually been doing already. Yeah, and I will say... Just not um, talking about it. Like, for instance, like cancer services, they do have volunteers that take some of their um, clients around. A lot of times that they're using us for wheelchair transportation since we have the buses that are handicap accessible. So, um, but yeah, I'll make sure that report on that and the end of next month when I have all the final numbers, I'll let everybody know. I think Mr. Poole is asking you to toot your horn a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. it, it, well. exactly where it's going. <laughs> because it has been a tremendous success, but I, th I think that the other thing that the commission wants to know, because we do have some oversight responsibility here, is to take a look at whether when we add these contracts, just to what you spoke to, uh, are we, are we <coughs> adding to the point where we're, we're denying service to others? And mm -hmm. is there a point at which, um, you know, we've added a contract and we've picked up a couple thousand dollars, but we really need to add another bus or another route, and that's pushed us over a threshold. So, and I, I know there's no way to do that precise account uh, cost accounting, but if the, you know, if, if the if the bus is otherwise empty at that period uh, of the day, then any dollar is incremental revenue. Uh, but if it's full, it's a loss of revenue. So I think that's kind of what we're looking for—a little bit of feedback along those lines. And trust me, ODOT's on me every day about that. That's something that you know I work on every day is to make sure we have that balance, and it's one of the requirements of this job is to make sure of that. So, but I'll make sure I can communicate that better with you guys. That'd be great. Okay. Well, okay. it's a—it's a—we we are to a certain extent victims of our own success, and we want to make sure that we you know <coughs> handle that properly. We know that you are, but we just appreciate a little more discussion. Completely okay. understandable. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Additional questions or comments regarding item one? <laughs> Mr. Crossy, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Fine. Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. And now on the ordinance? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. That, that legislation passes. Mrs. Crosser, would you present item number two, please? Yes, item two is the second reading of an ordinance amending part five general offenses code, chapter 131, or I'm sorry, 531, nuisances generally, sections 531.01 definitions and 531.02 public nuisance and adopting new section 531.05 defaced property of the codified ordinances of the city of Sandusky in the manner and way specifically set forth here and below. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Twine. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the second reading. Second. It's been a motion and second. Discussion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lockhart. Just Maybe we could have a word from the Mr. Lasko or the law director in regards to what they came up with, their legislation, just for clarity's sake. Uh, Mr. He who, who was it that suggested the modifications that were put out now? I did. Well, I, okay. <laughs> but, but, but who put them in there? <laughs> I didn't. It. You voted him down last month. <laughs> we, well, do you want to answer Mr. Lockhart's question? I'm trying to figure out who is involved. <laughs> you can start with him. <laughs> okay, Mr. Lasko. Uh, I think Mr. Poole wants to trade places with part of staff. Uh, yeah. Through you, Mr. President, to Commissioner Lockhart and the rest of the commissioners, and Trevor uh, can jump in if I miss anything. Uh, but if I remember correctly, the debate uh, two weeks ago, uh, stemmed uh, mostly around um, the idea of whether it would just be uh, verbal permission or written permission from a property owner uh, as to whether, uh, in this instance, uh, 
defaced property would be permitted. Um, in this current piece of, in this current draft of the legislation, it does require written permission as opposed to verbal permission. And we discussed internally um, that we actually are in support of that. Uh, I think it works well in the instance where property owners may sell a property and we have written record from the property owner that was there at the time they uh, provided permission. Um, I think we retained uh, the word defaced property as opposed to the original legislation graffiti, which uh, I believe Trevor uh, is comfortable with uh, in this piece of legislation. So I think it stemmed mostly around um, who would be granting permission and in which, ma in which manner they'd grant permission. And this legislation currently shows written permission, which uh, we're fine with uh, from an implementation standpoint. Additional questions or comments? Um, you know, Mr. Chairman, my only, my only concern was the same that you shared in regards to written permission. And, you know, if there's an instance of a family member or someone, and you say, go ahead, you know, it's my son, daughter, wife, whatever, and do it. And then later on, they don't have that in writing. Well, I don't know. Do uh, Mr. Lasko was charitable in describing the discussion at that uh, meeting beforehand as a debate. It was more of a fog about what the right language should be. We couldn't figure that out. And I, I think we still are at the, at the point where, where we were before, which is, you know, some question about whether that is going a little too far or not far enough. I, you know, that's a judgment call. So I don't think there's a, I don't know there's a wrong answer here, but I'm comfortable with the advice that's been provided by Mr. Lasko and Mr. Hayberger, prepared to vote on the legislation as amended by Mr. Poole, whether he was on the commission or the staff at the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll accept that. <laughs> Additional questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, one, just for, cool. yeah. The, if you read this, it says uh, the public right away for where this is this applicable. Uh, it's whether permanent term, whether public or private, which is visible from a public space, the public right away, or any other location a code compliance officer has the right to be. Just for clarity, I need to... I have some problems with that. It doesn't negate this, but where's a code compliance offer? Do you, where do you see him being that is not that needs to be codified, other than public, public space and public right away? Mr. Lasko. Uh, yes, through you, uh, Commission <coughs> President, to Commissioner Poole. This is uh, fairly typical um, as we undertake many inspections, whether they be nuisance or housing related. A lot of times, we may get a complaint from a neighbor. Um, about something in the rear of a property, which is not visible from an alley, which is not visible from a road, uh, the true public rights of way. Uh, so this legislation uh, would allow code compliance um, in this nuisance instance and all the rest of our nuisance instances uh, based on a, an adjoining property owner granting permission to utilize their property uh, to view the backside of an adjacent property. Uh, this is a lot of times how we undertake a lot of our nuisance abatement work as it relates to tall grass and weeds in the rear of a property uh, or trash piling up in the rear of a property. So this is pretty common as it relates to how we abate and inspect uh, most all of our nuisance and, and housing activities in the rear of a property. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lasko. Mr. Chairman, cool. just and since I didn't research it that far, is that the wording any location a code compliance officer has the right to be for the, any other, for the rest of our laws? The rest of our code compliance issues, is that phrase in there? Uh, through you. Probably the law director thinks he knows. Yep. Through you, Here. Commission President, to Commissioner Poole. That's the wording of the Plain View Doctrine. Um, and the Plain View Doctrine says anywhere in which a law enforcement is allowed to be. Okay. So that's the wording from that. Okay, the, the point is that's a doctrine <clears> that. <throat> We use, that's used everywhere. It's not part. It's not codified in our ordinances. Correct. Okay. And this is what my my concern. I'm not interested. I would prefer not expanding code officers into private. What this does is this is a public nuisance. Is what this is supposed to be. When you start going into the, it, becomes private with that phrase. Then it's private nuisance. Now we've engaged the city in private bickering between neighbors. If my neighbor doesn't like something on the side that, that's, that's personal between the two of them, the city needs to get in, doesn't need to get involved in that other than some kind of mediation, which the law director can do without this law. It, it just, we just, we've got enough work for the code compliance officers to deal with rather than getting into private disputes. 
It's supposed to be a public nuisance. That means it's from the public right away. It affects everyone. Next door neighbor asking us to mediate their problems. They should go to court and do that. So the more I've talked about it, I, I, I invite other commissioners to have an opinion about this because I, I, I think I want to make a motion, but I'll, I'll listen to see what anyone else thinks about what we're getting ourselves into by, by adding that. Additional thoughts, commissioners, comments? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Ms. Lloyd. I apologize I wasn't here for, this, for the first reading on this, but um, I appreciate changing the graffiti to the defaced property from looking through and like hearing the minutes uh, from the last meeting. But what is the purpose of having written permission? What is that really going to change whether we have a problem with defaced property that is that someone didn't have permission, whether it's written or not? Isn't that something that a property owner should be handling the way that they choose to? Are we overstepping a boundary in allowing property owners permission to do certain things to their property and others not? So I just I don't understand why we're stepping in and telling people that they have to have this document when really all we're trying to do is clean up some some spray paint or whatever you're really looking to have teeth to go in and have code compliance take care of. Mr. Chairman, since I did it, I suppose I should answer the question. Probably. Or unless you like, would you like to, Matt, jump in there. <laughs> Uh, three years. I was going to let him hang on his own petard there. I was I don't want to be comfortable enough, I, with that. But, but go ahead, Mr. Uh, through you, Commission President, to Commissioner Lloyd. Um, correctly, it wasn't in the initial uh, drafting of the legislation, uh, and I know uh, per Commissioner Poole, he made the motion uh, to insert it, uh, which I know was discussed two, two meetings ago. And again, the more we thought about it, um, we do think it helps in instances where, for example, a property is sold, and we can't track down that original property owner uh, for whatever reason. So for us to be able to have something on file permanently that tells us, the city, and us uh, as code compliance officers that this is permitted to be there, when we can't track down someone who may have given verbal permission or not, <coughs> it just creates some permanency for us to know whether something can appropriately be there or not. Um, and for our code compliance officers, you know, it could be something as a simple letter from a property owner, uh, which we can standardize and just have them sign, or something from a contractor that is an agreement to do something on the property. So the more we thought about it, we, we believe it makes sense um, as we go through property transfers that may have, uh, you know, may have a complaint related to something on the property. So it's just closing that loophole of whether there was permission and authorization from a property owner. Ms. Poole, I'm going to uh, address the other question which you'd asked about you know whether we're not get, whether we aren't putting ourselves in the, in between disputes between property owners any number of our code uh, requirements could be uh, looked at the same way whether it's peeling paint or a falling gutter um, you know there are a lot of things that only a, com a code compliance officer is only going to see if they're invited uh, onto somebody else's property and they can see the back or something like that so I don't really see that this is different in in that regard uh, additional questions or comments? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Lloyd. Uh, just a response um, through you to Mr. Lasco. Would we be, should we be taking care of this through code compliance or should we be taking care of that portion for the written permission for property transfer through <coughs> some type of permit for someone to be putting that on their property? And maybe that's not for you, maybe that's for Mr. Haberger. Mr. Chairman. Sure. No, that's oh, yeah. I think Ms. Haber is about to address that. Okay. Uh, through you, Commission President, Commissioner Lloyd. Uh, I think the point of the um, written permission, and not, it doesn't say prior written permission, first of all, so it just says written permission. So the point of this is to not get caught in a chicken or egg, like, did I have permission? Well, no, I didn't. So then it, so it just, the written permission clearly establishes whether we're being involved or not. If they had written permission, then to uh, Commissioner Poole's point, we go back to the, to the neighbor and say, sorry, they have written permission. They don't fall under our code. This is something you'll have to handle through civil litigation on your own. So that's the point of the, because I know it's hard to believe, but people tend to play both sides out of their mouth. 
So we just want to lock them to one answer. And regardless of whatever it is, if it says, yep, I, here's my written permission, then we have a response to the complaining witness. If there is no uh, written permission, then we can move forward with our codes. Additional questions or comments? Mrs. Kresser, would you then call the roll, please? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Now on the ordinance? Well, I'm sorry, that was the second reading, so that passes on second reading. Item number three, please. Item number three is an ordinance approving a project funding agreement with Cedar Point Park LLC relating to various development activities in connection with certain property located in the city and declaring an emergency. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Twine. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. It's been a motion and second. Discussion. Mr. Lasko, Mr. Klein, I'm not sure <coughs> which of you we should look to to give us a, a bit of a layout here, but if uh, one of you wants to <coughs> tee that up. Uh, yes, I'm happy to, uh, Mr. President. Um, and I believe this is the second reading on uh, this. I was refer referring in particular to the question that was posed regarding the use oh. of the TIF funds and the uh, what has been, um, I'm sorry, I should have been clear, what, what, what has been committed. Um, and I, I know that we have not sold TIF bonds at this point, that those funds have been, uh, those commitments have been funded through the sale of short-term bonds. Uh, and that we anticipate that as a result of the discussion that we've already had regarding the, the minimum commitment coming from the TIF, but if you could just give us a rough sense of how much has been committed. Yes, Mr. President, I'd probably have to, on the expense can... side, I'd probably defer to the city manager or Director Klein uh, as, in terms of the work that's been done and the expenses incurred thus far. I can uh, jump in, and then if you're in or anyone wants to supplement, Sally, please do, uh, through the commission president to the rest of the commission. Um, we do view the Cleveland Road TIF or the TIF that is on the, the sports center's indoor project as the primary funding source for not only the $2.25 million under consideration tonight, but also eventually both design projects for this phase of the pathway and then the second phase of the pathway, which covers everything to the west of Cedar Point Drive for the rest of the city, but doing the math, even at its most basic uh, collection or the minimum collection amount, which is the, the part that is under the contract with Cedar Fair, that would leave approximately uh, $10 million after the payment of those to go towards construction. Uh, and ultimately, uh, if other funds come in, uh, similar to the grant we applied for, for the pathway through the federal government this year, but we're unsuccessful, <laughs> we'll be able to further reduce those designs through other funding sources. But, but even if we made 100% of those payments on the both phases of design and this allocation of Cedar Point, we'd have approximately about $10 million left, uh, which would be the base construction budget for the pathway and the landing park project. Okay, thank you, Mr. Whoops. And by the way, uh, could, you, could you also address, uh, while you're uh, uh, speaking to this topic, uh, the question that has come up about whether any of these TIF funds could be applied to the Route uh, 6 improvements. There's been a little bit of confusion about that. My understanding from speaking with you that that, that, that is not applicable. Yeah, no, we no. are, we, yeah, go ahead. Uh, through the commission president to the rest of the commission and the audience, uh, the we have for years been planning specifically for the Landing Park and Sanusky Bay Pathway to be the primary recipients of the TIF funds of these projects. It is what was negotiated with Cedar Fair uh, and the Sandusky City Schools as the TIF was being created, both of whom obviously had to support this. Uh, and, and so we will be dedicating those funds towards the Pathway and Landing Park. Okay, thank you. Additional questions or comments, commissioners? Mrs. Crasser, would you poll the commissioners on the ordinance, please? Ms. Twine? Yes. Wait, Mr. Lockhart? I'm, oh. I'm sorry? On the motion. It's on the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you poll the commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. And now on the ordinance? <coughs> Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. That ordinance is adopted. Um, and the confusion that we had on that one, folks, was the first reading was uh, not pursuant to Section 13 or 14, but the second one was, so that's why we had the motion and we still voted on it twice. So 
That was tricky, Mr. Haber. You threw me off on that. <coughs> Mr. Cresser, item number four, please. Yes, item number four is an ordinance approving a donation agreement with Cedar Point Park LLC relating to certain property located in the city and declaring an emergency. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chair. Mr. Waddington. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules in full accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Second. Then a motion and second. Discussion? Chairman. Mr. Lockhart. There's a question on the ownership of this. Perhaps Direct Klein or someone could explain the map and kind of give clarity. Please, Mr. Klein. Yes, sir. Through you, Mr. President. Unfortunately, the image that I... Uh, outlined in colors here. The colors didn't show up all that well. The orange actually looks like a red. So what you will see on the map uh, that's on the screen right now is the cross-hatched area that is in red that is fully owned by the city of Sandusky. So that's not, uh, it, it is right now. Um, the area that's cross-hatched in black, that small area that's landlocked, um, towards the north, kind of the eastern side of the old north-south runway, that is a portion that would be retained by Cedar Fair or Cedar Point uh, Park. The, if you look on the west side of the map, there's the green. That piece is what is currently owned by the Metro Parks that we are looking uh, to obtain from them, and, and we're going through those negotiations right now as to the exact legal description. But the part that the ordinance refers to is actually the white section, kind of in the middle. Um, I don't know what shape you would call that, but it <laughs> extends from Cleveland Road, uh, kind of north, northerly, and then goes a little bit to the east, or all the way to the corporation limit, down the old east-west runway, and then it also extends down the old north-south runway. Um, so for... Uh, this donation agreement, that part that's outlined, it's actually supposed to be in orange, but that part that's outlined there, that's approximately 30 acres that Cedar Point would be donating to the landing project. And, Thank you, Mr. Klein. And with that, the... I don't know if you can fully say the use mm -hmm. and, and, and maintenance of that property. Do you have any... Any clarity there? Through you, Mr. President. Yes, the use of that would be for the construction of the pathway, the boardwalks, um, any roadways, parking facilities, pavilions, playgrounds, all the other things that are currently under design as part of the landing project. Um, as far as maintenance, we're going through those discussions right now. Uh, right now, the intent that's on the books is obviously if the city builds it, we're going to maintain it. In the agreement, the the, the city uh, that we just approved with Cedar Point, Cedar Fair, um, they're not going to be obviously maintaining the park that we build, but we are looking, and that's part of the negotiations that we have ongoing with the Metro Parks right now is to figure out if there's any role that they would play in the ongoing maintenance, whether that's uh, staff on a daily basis, whether that's... Um, for programming of the facility, just what that agreement's going to look like, and that's why that one's taking a little bit longer as we proceed. So um, we're going through some cost analysis of exactly what the short-term and long-term maintenance responsibilities of that facility would be. So that's something that we're hoping to figure out what kind of staffing levels and, and budgets we would need to maintain this as we proceed on an annual basis. Thank you, Mr. Klein. And just to <coughs> add to that a little bit, my understanding of the reason for having those conversations with the Metro Parks uh, is that while we are, are good at maintaining, you know, the many playgrounds that we have, these days we're a lot better than we were six years ago. But uh, we're not as adept as Metro Parks is at maintaining natural um, and wide spaces. That's that's what they do. So we, we are looking uh, for an opportunity to potentially partner with them, uh, and, and hopefully that will come to fruition. Additional questions or comments, Mr. Poole? Mr. Chairman, the funding for that maintenance comes from where and how? Ms. Klein. Three, Mr. President, those are details that we uh, we don't have worked out yet. When we do come to an agreement with the Metro Parks, whether they're um, going to be doing some of the maintenance, that'll be worked out in that agreement. This is strictly for the donation. So any of those long-term agreements with the Metro Parks 
or just within our annual budget for O and M through the city is where we would incorporate those. So we don't have those numbers back yet, those annual numbers. So once we get those, I can certainly let you know what, what they look like. Additional questions or comments? Mr. Well, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Lockhart. Uh, my, I guess my only concern is, is that we're taking the property in as a donation and we don't know yet budgetarily what that could be. Uh, you know, how that would impact our budget, what the cost is, or, or you know, potentially if we're able to maintain it. You know, when times get tough, you know, it's usually the parks that suffer. So, you know, I'm, I'm just hesitant to vote on it without really knowing where we'll be with 30 acres. That's a pretty big uh, piece of property. Well, I guess I would say this. I mean, Sandusky's been on a growth trajectory for the last number of years, and... We've seen that. It's been embraced by the community. It's been embraced by the residents. It's been embraced by investors. Um, and we are seeing an uptick, a significant uptick in our revenues. Um, the idea behind uh, the development of the sports force, now the Cedar Point Sports Center, was that it would attract additional people to our community and we would, uh, we would have those additional revenues from those folks coming so that we could continue to expand the services that we offer. I think this is a prime example, you know, 201 year old city being able to, I've said this before, uh, envision and bring to, to reality a new waterfront park. I mean, it's just amazing. So I have every confidence that the revenues will follow and that uh, future commissions will figure out how to balance those needs. Um, the fact that we don't necessarily know all of the answers to all the questions that will come tomorrow is one that would cause us to never take new steps. Um, it reminds me of a young person who's thinking about, oh, perhaps getting married or taking a job. How am I gonna, how am I gonna pay the mortgage? How am I gonna pay the electric bill? How am I gonna pay for what children need? You don't know all these things, but you grow and you move forward with confidence that you'll be able to continue. I think that that's what we're on. I mean, these are fair questions to ask that have to be answered in due course, but I would respectfully say, not tonight. Mr. Chairman, cool. if you would, then um, has the, um, we had a rendering of what the landing was going to look like, what, two years ago? Kind of run through, as to your best you remember, your recollection, the, uh, what we're putting out there that's going to generate income. Just, you see, I don't know what you've, changed or what's going to be there any longer. I remember we had a rendering that said this would be nice and it was very, it was excellent. So as you move forward in the last two years, um, the answer to, hit to the question of like, are we going to generate any revenue is tied to what you're putting there that's going to generate revenue. Actually, Mr. Poole, what is, I, that, is that correct? I mean, no, just, no, 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 because oh, the, 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 what I was alluding to was when the county passed, uh, that additional tax that is supporting the bonds that supported then the construction of the Cedar Point Sports Center uh, today and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, sports center uh, before, the, the, the outdoor facility. Uh, what I was pointing to is Cedar Point said, look, we're gonna sell all these additional beds, we're gonna have all these additional revenues, and then look what this will do for our local government partners because we have all these other people here who are employed, who are coming into our community, who are going to Cedar Point, they're paid the admissions tax. That's what I was alluding to. I'm certainly not expecting that the landing park uh, is going to, um, and I, I didn't mean to suggest that, is gonna create any revenue. That's just not what parks do. Parks always lose money. Uh, by design, they lose money. Uh, and that's okay, because that's what we provide is in terms of services to our residents. So that's all I meant. Mr. Chairman. I I did. did I cut you off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. no, I, I completely understand where you're going with that, and, and sure, sure enough, there's probably a lot of interest out there, but you know, when we play speculation with that much property, it, uh, it doesn't bode well as well with me uh, when you have 30 acres of property, which is extended from our reach, which causes much more expense and labor when we have to go out that far on that side of town to maintain 30 acres. That's what I'm saying. I follow your line of thinking that, true enough, we may have some that are interested and interested partners, but in the end, we, the citizens, we're on the hook for the property. So. 
Mr. Whoops, you had something to add. Uh, through the commission president to the commissioners, I just wanted to add that we have had very productive conversations with the Metro Parks, and while we don't have a very specific budget that's being worked out through Environmental Design Group and the Metro Parks, uh, I do think it is likely that we'll be able to come to an agreement with them, and they are looking to potentially take that cost on for themselves. And, and to your point about proximity, Commissioner Lockhart, uh, they do directly adjacent to this have hundreds, if not thousands, of acres of existing park. And, and while this might be slightly more active than some of those parks, a lot of this is conservation of wetland, which is very has a very modest or um, you know low maintenance plan. It is meant to be natural, and so I, I don't think that. The overall budget, even if we did take that on, whether that was us funding the Metro Parks directly or alternatively doing it ourselves, is so large that it would not be, that it would become a major strain on the city's budget as a total overall percentage. I think we're talking about something in the shorter term that would be in the, the, the very, very low uh, six figures, if not less, at least based on what the Metro Parks has told us in the, in the past. <clears throat> and, oh, I'm sorry. Just the questions or comments. Yes. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Uh, would, would you entertain sometime soon uh, just representing what the landing's going to look like when it's done? Maybe that would help clear this up because uh, I actually, f maybe my recollection is wrong. I, I saw that as more of a, a, rather than just a passive kind of park, I thought there was going to be um, things out there that drew people there that they spend money on and, you know, you could have things that generated money and activities. Uh, through the through the commission president to Commissioner Poole, uh, as you see the 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 shaded black lines on the the eastern edge of the portion that's being donated, mm -hmm. that is where the private development is to take place. But that's actually land being held back by Cedar Point that would do that private development. And certainly, this will be a, a hybrid mix. I guess there are some things that are more active here. There is a pier and a lookout uh, lighthouse, but other than those sort of types of activities. It is relatively grass and wetland type area that will will be there with some shelter and some things like that as well. Mr. Chairman, thank you. That 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 clears it up because I I blended the two together as one as uh, one entity. So if we're just going to have some marshland and grass and and weeds and things like that, that you look at <laughs> and go out look at lookouts for birds, it probably won't cost us any more than the uh, other uh, like we have at the end of uh, River Avenue in terms of cost. Additional questions or comments, Mr. So. Chairman. Last thing I'd like to know is, I don't know if we've done any environmental surveys yet, but if we have, I'd certainly like to hear about it after they're done or if they're done already, just to make sure that we're not, I mean, this was the airport at one point, so I just want to make sure that there's nothing that we're on the hook environmentally about down the road. I don't know that there part is, of what but, the but, is doing but just, just like to know just down the road, so. I think, Mr. Klein, could you address the question? I believe that's within the scope of what EDG is. Uh, doing for us part of the design. Yes, sir, Mr. President. That's they're going through probably between ten and fifteen different environmental analyses for turtles, mussels, different plants, bats, everything that you can think of, and that's why it's actually taking so long as they're going through all that. And um, we've got to get permits from Ohio EPA, ODNR, Fish and Wild. Like there's so many permits and things that they have to get before we can even proceed with construction. <coughs> So we're going through all of those things, but I can certainly give you an update on which ones we've done and where we stand with them. I think that would be appreciated. Thank yep. you, Mr. Klein. Absolutely. If there's nothing more. Mrs. Crusher, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. And now on the ordinance? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. That ordinance is adopted. <clears throat> Item number five, please. Item number five is an ordinance authorizing and approving a first amendment to the grant agreement with Cook Building LLC and Huntley <clears throat> Building LLC in relation to the properties located at 154 to 162 Columbus Avenue. 119 East Market Street and 133 East Market Street, and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Twine. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. 
Then a motion and second. Uh, discussion, and I'll ask Mr. Lasco to get that started uh, because um, we have two. Well, I don't know, Mr. Lasco, I guess you'd be addressing both of these. Uh, we have two related pieces of legislation, um, the, and I'll just let you address that in terms of the changes to the Cook Building situation. Uh, yes, Mr. President, if it's okay, if I'll address both Please. related pieces of legislation. Um, earlier in 2019, uh, this commission uh, passed three pieces of legislation related to the Cook redevelopment. Uh, there were two separate enterprise zone tax abatements, one for Huntley Building and one for Cook Building, because they were separate legal entities. So they each had to have their separate uh, tax abatement agreement. However, we uh, bundled the grant in one piece of legislation for both the Cook and Huntley, uh, but the way that we separated it is that uh, the, it was a half a million dollar grant, 150,000 to be dispersed at the completion of the Huntley building, which is now the marketplace at Cook. Uh, the other 350,000 was to be dispersed upon the completion of the main Cook structure. Uh, and the middle building. Uh, as we all know, uh, the, the Cook project, uh, <coughs> due to deterioration once construction started, that project is changing drastically uh, and no longer uh, is sort of uh, in line with what the grant stated and the tax abatement stated from total investment, number of jobs, uh, and the makeup of the building itself. Uh, so just as cleanup items, um, we're recommending first an amendment to the grant agreement um, that would basically make the grant only 150,000, which uh, full disclosure has been dispersed. Um, but we would take off the table the $350,000 for the Cook building uh, since that project as contemplated in the grant is, is no longer occurring. Uh, and then secondarily, uh, we would look to mutually terminate the tax abatement uh, only for the Cook building uh, LLC uh, project. Uh, the Huntley <coughs> building one remains in effect, which was a 10-year, 75% abatement. Uh, and then I will note, um, we are having, not me directly, but I know some of our departments are having discussions with the Hografies who are looking to rebuild on site, which is great. Um, so it is possible that there are future requests from uh, Rick and Megan, whether it relates to grant proceeds or a tax abatement. Uh, so this just cleans up these two <laughs> items, but there may be a future request that is brought to this commission once the new project is finalized. Thank you, Mr. Lasko. Commissioners, questions or comments? Mr. Chairman. Ms. Lloyd. I'll be abstaining due to a business relationship with the Hografies. Just out of curiosity, Ms. Lasko, do we have a demolition date? Uh, through you, Mr. President, uh, last we heard, which was about a week or two ago, uh, is they're probably going to push it back to early in the new year. Uh, we do not have a demolition permit that has been pulled uh, to date, but uh, last we heard, I would think, in the next month or two. All right, thank you. Additional questions or comments, Commissioners? Mrs. Crusher, would you poll the Commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Abstain. <clears throat> Mr. Waddington? Yes. And on the ordinance? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Abstain. Mr. Waddington? Yes. That ordinance is adopted. <laughs> item number six, please, Mrs. Cresser. Yes, item number six is an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to execute a mutual agreement to terminate the Enterprise Zone Agreement with Cook Building LLC relating to property located at 119 East Market Street and 154 to 162 Columbus Avenue and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Waddington. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules and full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. A motion and second. Discussion? Mr. Cressy, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Abstain. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Now on the ordinance? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Abstain. Mr. Waddington? Yes. That ordinance is adopted. Item number seven, please. Item number seven is an <coughs> ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into an enterprise <coughs> zone agreement with Bay Boat Storage Limited relating to property located at 1531 First <coughs> Street 
and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with <coughs> section 14 of the city charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? This is the point where someone makes a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Lloyd. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules and in full accordance uh, with section 14 of the city charter. Second. Then a motion and second. <coughs> Discussion. Um, Mr. Lasko, are you presenting this item and the, the, why don't you present this item and the next one uh, because they're both dealing with the same area of property and <laughs> the same uh, commercial entity. Oh, yes, through you, Mr. President, and I, I did want to acknowledge, I believe, uh, John, is, John is in the audience in case anyone had any questions for him. Um, but I will cover both pieces of legislation. Uh, although not related directly, uh, we thought it would be a good story uh, to bring uh, the LOI at the same time this commission was considering uh, tax abatement legislation uh, for a new building uh, at the Sunrise Marina site. Um, I'll handle the tax abatement first. Um, as we know, the Hodes uh, own several large properties on First Street, uh, whether that be Sunrise Marina, Venetian Marina, uh, and most recently their acquisition of uh, uh, Battery Park, which is now uh, Crossview. Uh, this tax abatement is specific to the Sunrise Marina facility um, at 1531 First Street, where the Hodes are looking to construct a 60,000 <laughs> square foot uh, heated uh, indo indoor boat storage facility uh, that would have offices and bathrooms. Um, this would result in uh, uh, over a million dollars in physical investment into the facility and also would result in the hiring of minimally three new employees in the, in the form of an equipment operator and laborers. Um, the enterprise zone agreement uh, calls for the project to be done no later than the end of 2020. Uh, I'm sure the building will be uh, done much sooner than that uh, and would result in minimally $120,000 in additional payroll. Uh, what we brought forth to commission is the consideration of a 10-year, 75% uh, real estate tax abatement, which is typical uh, for staff to recommend to commission. Um, and I did just want to acknowledge that we did, uh, per Ohio Revised Code, put the schools on notice on November 22nd um, of this proposed legislation and tonight's meeting. Uh, we have no comment thus far from the schools. Um, then I want to move to the LOI, uh, which is uh, the next piece of legislation. Um, we do uh, anticipate uh, coming before commission probably sometime early in 2020 with formal easement agreements to consider. Uh, but we wanted to put a framework in place um, because John and, and his family truly have been um, some of the largest advocates, albeit quietly, uh, for the creation and implementation of the Sandusky Bay Pathway. And this is sort of their first step and show of support uh, for the creation and construction of the Sandusky Bay Pathway. So the LOI uh, actually considers all three of their properties on First Street, uh, not just the Sunrise Marina uh, and, and that new building. Uh, so the LOI, and there's uh, several examples and exhibits in the uh, packet that show uh, where that pathway would go uh, in front of Venetian Marina, uh, in front of Sunrise Marina, uh, and then they've been very generous in uh, allowing uh, the city to look at crossing <laughs> northwesterly through uh, the Crossview Marina site, um, which to get closer to the water, uh, which is very important. Um, but per the LOI, again, we'd bring back easements, uh, but some of the things that we negotiated is uh, this pathway runs very close to uh, their buildings, so they'd have the opportunity with proper notice to uh, close down uh, the pathway as necessary to do building maintenance. Uh, and then also because of the traffic that is coming out of those facilities, this LOI states that um, in those instances, in those three instances, uh, that vehicles would actually have the right of way uh, and we'd properly sign um, uh, warnings for uh, pedestrians and, and bicyclists. And then of course, all the costs of construction uh, and changing the location of any vegetation uh, or fences would be on the city as well, which is pretty typical for uh, most of the properties that the pathway is crossing through. Uh, so this is really just a, a precursor to us bringing back formal easements in, in early 2020, but we thought it was a good show of support uh, from a, a very important and large stakeholder uh, for their support of the pathway. Thank you, Mr. Lasko. Mr. Lasko, questions or comments, commissioners? Mr. Lockhart. I kind of want to address number eight, but uh, shall I wait or shall we do it now? 
Uh, why don't you address it now? Uh, Mr. Lasko, if you could just, uh, I've heard from citizens in the past about easements, especially near the water and things like that. You know, could you address the minimal impact of this easement or anything like that to the surrounding neighbors or anything in that regard? As far as the easement number eight or number seven on our agenda, there's an easement here. Does that easement run along the water there? So as I understand the easement, Mr. Lasco, this is, this is, we're strictly talking about the easement that runs through the property controlled by the Hodes and, and, and no other private property at this point. <coughs> Correct. Uh, through you, Mr. President, to Commissioner Lockhart, hopefully I'm addressing your question. So the LOI uh, actually considers all three of Hody owned properties, the Venetian Marina, the Sunrise Marina, and Crossview Marina. And per the exhibits, it lays out where we believe, without having full-blown surveys, where the ultimate easements will be. Uh, and those were um, mutually negotiated uh, with John and his team and the city and EDG. Um, and I know based on that, in a meeting we had with John and uh, Kula, uh, they're satisfied um, with that and some of the other restrictions and protections we put in here for their traffic and their staff. Uh, and then also, us also taking responsibility for moving and relocating fences and access gates is something that they've uh, shown support for and are agreeable to based on these exhibits. I don't know if that additional, fully answers it. Additional questions or comments? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Poole. Um, just as uh, dealing with the uh, landing and having an update, I think where this is going, uh, we need a, if I could, have a an update on this, this bicycle plan. It's nice that you're getting one easement at a time as we move down First Street but need to have some concept of numbers to determine whether or not this is going to be uh, something we're actually going to be able to do. There's, uh, moving off of First Street down by the water, there are some obstacles that, that, that have to be addressed that may end up being ended up in legal battles, may end up in ex extraordinary costs to do that, and, and before we keep just one stepping ourselves into debt that we're not going to be able to, to a project, we may not be able to finish it. We may not have the money or have the will to spend the money. I'd like some idea from where you're going with this. So far, everything's moving along seemingly swimmingly, but we don't have a final price on, on what or anything near that. Uh, and you can just look directly at what it's going to cost. The, uh, if you plan on going behind a police station, how are you going to design a bridge and do that for gets to the point where uh, cost of a bicycle path that's going to move very few people might become uh, out of the, out of our budget or what's reasonable to spend. Additional questions or comments? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Brady. Uh, there, there are still a lot of pieces to this puzzle to fall into place for the, for the bike path. We are at the first few steps of a very long journey. I think we all realize that. But I will tell you this, that having a letter of intent from the Hodes to pass this, bike, this pathway through their property, as opposed to being out on the street on First Street, I believe it's so much more preferential, and I, and I thank them and their family for it. Whether we use it or not, that's remained to be seen, but you know, we, we have a commitment from them that, uh, that we can get on their property to do that. I, th I think that's a, that's a remarkable thing this early in the game. Additional questions or comments? Mr. Chairman? Ms. Ms. Lloyd. I was really happy to see this on the agenda tonight, so thank you to the Hodes for being willing to work with us. Um, just a couple questions, and I don't know if the discussions have been had, but something to think about going forward with future letter of intents or easements is what would be the frequency that they may need access to the bike path and shutting it down? How are we going to sign that? How far east or west are we going to sign that? Because what do you do when we have people on the bike path? Are they expected to turn around? Because we did talk about this being not just recreational, but an actual mode of transportation for people to use on a daily basis. Um, so just some things to think about. Additional questions or comments? You know, Mr. Waddington, you and I uh, have both been on one commission <coughs> or another for nine or 10 years or so, thereabouts. And we've been talking about the Sandusky Bay pathway most of that time. And this is one of the biggest pieces to snap into place all at once over that entire period of time. This is a huge win for the city of Sandusky. 
And I think the Hodes also understand it's a win for them and for their properties, but for the community as a whole. So I'm very appreciative of that. I want to highlight uh, two things. Um, um, well, the first is simply the importance of having a strategic plan that you work at and you work at and you work <coughs> at because uh, these things come to fruition over only a long period of time with sustained effort. And I just want to thank the staff for sticking to it and making sure that we continue at this. Um, I alluded to this idea before. <coughs> it is true, and in a different context, but I, I think it's applicable here. I was thinking about some advice I, I've given people over the years. It is true that we don't necessarily know where the next piece of the pathway goes or whether we'll have permission there, although Mr. Lasko uh, has assured me that he's had, we've had conversations with some of the other property owners uh, in that partic for that particular stretch, and we, we are hopeful that we will be able to bring all these things together. But uh, I'm reminded of the fact that if I knew how hard law school was going to be, I would have never gone to law school. And if I knew how hard marriage was going to be, I never would have gotten married. <laughs> and if I knew how hard it was going to be to raise children, especially three daughters, I never would have done any of that. And thank God I didn't know uh, because we figured it out along the way. And I think this is one of these things. Uh, it, there will be challenges ahead. But if we don't take these steps, we'll never see that come to fruition. So um, I'm, I'm glad we're doing it. So thank you to the Hodes and thank you to our great staff. Additional questions or comments? Mrs. Cresser, would you call the uh, roll uh, regarding the motion, please? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. And now on the ordinance? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. That ordinance is adopted. <laughs> item number eight, please. Yes, item number eight it is an ordin ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into a letter of intent with the Hody family of companies relating to future <laughs> easements for the Sandusky Bay pathway and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in acc accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication that we already debated, what is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Poole. move for the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules, full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. It's been a motion and second. Further discussion? Mrs. Cresser, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. And now on the ordinance? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. That ordinance is adopted. Now we get to discuss the second really great piece of legislation or development for the city of Sandusky tonight. Mrs. Cresser, would you present item number nine, please? Yes. Item number nine is an ordinance authorizing and approving a grant in the amount of $139,609 through the Substantial Development Grant Program to Market Street Collective, LLC, in relation to the property located at 317 East Washington <coughs> Street, and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Waddington. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. second. Motion and second. Discussion. Story. Mr. Commission President, thank you. This is a brief uh, presentation on the behalf of Market Street Collective, LLC. We have with us tonight Mr. Raul Polywall in, the, in attendance. He can answer any questions. He traveled a long distance to get here tonight uh, for this pr pr presentation. Market Street Collective is a Delaware limited liability company that was formed uh, this summer to acquire and redevelop the, the former Crimus Cardinal Grocery Building is site at 317 East Washington Street. Uh, Mr. Yanko, Dave Yanko, and Mr. Polywall are the principals of this LLC. Uh, critical to us in the city, this is really the first major opportunity zone fund-based investment that's come across our desks. Uh, it was reviewed by the Community Development Department and then uh, subsequently the Economic Development Incentive Committee. Um, <coughs> the principals here and the, and the uh, Market Street Collective itself has a history of developing raising, syndicating, syndicating funds similar to this to foster development in cities similar to this across the country. They've recently acquired multiple properties throughout Northern Ohio 
in addition to this project. The, this project is the latest plan to attract investment investors with an intent to deploy the funds from the Opportunity Zone into the formerly vacant building and site and to multi-tenant and make it a four-season site with an urban food hall being the result. <clears throat> we think it pairs wonderfully with the opening of the BGSU Resort and Attraction Management College, which will be within literally two blocks of the site. You're all familiar with this, uh, this visual. This is a picture of the Cardinal Grocery Building itself and then the site as a whole on the right. To the project, this is a transformation of the grocery, which will begin at January 1st or thereafter. The lot size in total is over 42,000 square feet. The building itself is over 11,000 square feet. This project will be the build out and transformation of the site into an indoor food hall, which will contain a craft coffee roaster, deli bakery, multiple food stalls, a cocktail bar, a micro distillery, and an ice creamery. Improvements to the building and property include a complete facade enhancement, the creation of a patio and public piazza, and new entryways to take advantage and maximize the seasonality of this location. Here is a projected site plan with Washington Street, which would be to the left-hand side running north-south and market north-south. In reality, obviously, that's east-west, but on this visual, that's the site plan. Projected programming, as you'll see, contains the number of square footage, the number of seats in, broken down by each use from the uh, coffee roastery bar, noodle bar, grill, fish and chips, ice creamery, distillery, storage facilities. Here are the renders, renderings of the site broken down as follows. This is considered the dining space slash entrance. You'll see the bar to the, about 2 o'clock. Interior renderings, uh, we have the bar lounge, creamery, and distillery. The bakery, food stalls, and distillery. <laughs> the ice creamery. <clears throat> Exterior renderings, and this is the creation of the piazza, just outside the main entrance, the new facade, and the entrance as it would look from East Washington Street. Our nighttime view, and the view from the car park garage with the Sandusky Food Hall sign on the left-hand side. This grant request originally was for $256,600. We at the city performed the due diligence on the project costs and determined that of 1.396 million were eligible hard and soft project costs under our rules. That includes the interior build out to the space, the public space build out, and then the infrastructure improvements therein. We at the city and the committee determined the project of this magnitude did fall in line with the previous applicants and decided and recommended and approved a grant the amount of $139,000. $610, which is magically 10% of the number of eligible dollars based on the hard and soft costs. Additionally, the company also applied for the tax abatement for the project, the enterprise zone application. For $2 million plus investment in a vacant building in a parcel on the eastern edge of downtown, we believe is critical to continue the momentum and growth taking place in this core. The projections by the applicant are for eight full-time employees and six seasonal employees upon <coughs> completion. And that does not include the tenants who would be working at the food and market stalls within the project. Projected revenues, payrolls for the new employees are very uh, conservative, we believe, but year one, $404,180, rising all the way to year three, $482,790. And in keeping with the tradition in this community, the uh, abatement would be akin to the, uh, the bay boat storage. It's a 10-year, 75% abatement on the increase in the real estate value uh, appraisal. Here's the breakdown sources and uses by line item. As you'll see on the uses side, the bolded categories are those that are eligible under our rules, build out costs, soft costs, and on the right hand side you'll see where the city ED uh, substantial development grant comes in. Again, the, the proposal was brought November 19th. It was unanimously approved. 130000 of the $139,000 610 will be coming from this year's budget. The remaining $9,610 will be coming from next year's budget with expectation that ground will be broken January 1st and be completed by year end of 2020. Thank you, Mr. Story. Commissioners, questions or comments? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lockhart. Um, uh, I, can't, I can't remember his name correctly. Is it Mr. Pollywell? Pollywell. 
poem. Yeah. I'd like to thank you for uh, coming to this community, taking a chance. That's a significant amount of money to invest. I understand that you have some experience and you have multiple uh, venues like this. Um, and so it's, it's unique to have this here. I've visited other cities where uh, they have something similar to this. And so it's, it's unique that it's brought to Sandusky, especially in the downtown Sandusky, in uh, Crimus, which is a staple uh, to this city. I don't know if you're going to be leaving up any of the signage or any of the nostalgia there. That, that would be quite unique. Um, but again, uh, I want to thank you for coming here and doing this and investing all that money. So I'm fully supporting this. Additional questions or comments? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Waddington. Uh, 50, 55 years ago, I used to go with my mom when it was the A&P store, and then later uh, at Crama store. And the last, I think I was one of the last ones in there last day. Uh, I just wanted to walk through, kind of reminisce. And then as I left, I thought, well, how long was this going to sit empty? Is this going to be another <coughs> tombstone in our community? So I'm glad, thrilled that uh, you're doing this, and I'm in full support of it. Thank you. Additional questions or comments? I think it's important for the public to note that this grant is funded at the conclusion of the uh, construction of the project and based upon the city determining that all of the requirements have been established. Uh, that comes up from time to time. That is our general policy and, and there's no variation from that. Uh, they, there has been um, continued discussion among our community of the need still for a grocer. Yes. And I know staff is still working on attracting someone uh, to, to fill that need. Um, you know, our, our obligation as a city is to be open to investments and ideas and to primarily let those be driven by the private sector because ultimately those are where we're going to get the best deals, the best return on, on investment and the best service to our community. That's the American way. But um, we are still hopeful that some something will come forward. I think this is great. I said this is one of two uh, great developments tonight. There are three. You know, we talk about having uh, uh, this huge donation of land uh, by Cedar Point and that development, uh, the Bayfront Pathway, and now Food Hall downtown. Um, sometimes the good news just won't quit. So, uh, Mr. Wilpser, congratulations. Keep it <laughs> I don't know what will be on the agenda next week, but soon will be more of the same. <laughs> Additional questions or comments? <coughs> Mrs. Crasher, would you poll the commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Wadding? Yes. And now on the ordinance? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Wadding? Yes. That ordinance is adopted. And now uh, related item number 10, please. Yes, item number 10 is an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into an enterprise zone agreement with Market Street Collective LLC relating to property located at 317 East Washington Street and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the city charter. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Ms. Lloyd. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the suspension of the rules and in full accordance with Section 14 of the city charter. Second. It's been a motion and second. Discussion. Mr. Crusher, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. And on the ordinance? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. That ordinance, ordinance is adopted. And our final item, Mrs. Kresser, item 11, please. Yes, the final item is the first reading of an ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into an amended programmatic agreement for coordination between the city and the Ohio Historic Preservation Office for administration of programs using United States Department of Housing and Urban Development allocated funds. Commissioners, having heard this communication, how do you wish to proceed? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Twine. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under the first reading. Second. It's been a motion and second. Discussion. Mrs. Crusher, would you pull the commissioners on the motion, please? Ms. Twine? Yes. Mr. Lockhart? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Ms. Lloyd? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. That passes on first reading. And that concludes our regular items of business. And Mr. Whoopser, we turn the meeting over to you now for your city manager's report. Thank you, Commission President Murray, commissioners, audience, and staff. I will start with the donations. 
A donation of $7 was received from Thelma Blair for the Sandusky Police Department. I'd ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. And a motion second. Discussion? Without objection, motion be approved. In hearing no objection, the motion is, our, is approved with our thanks. A donation of $500 was received from Lynn Noda Stedman for the Red Popcorn Wagon Endowment Fund. I'd ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Been a motion second. Discussion? Without objection, the motion will be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved, again, with our thanks. A donation of $500 was received from Santa Marino Development Company, LLC, for holiday lights. I'd ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Been a motion and second. Discussion? Without objection, the motion be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved, with our thanks. Thank you. A donation from Firelands Regional Medical Center, as well as Savista Bank. Uh, they've each donated $5,000 towards the city's efforts to create an opportunity zone physical uh, downtown master plan and policy recommendations. Uh, I'd ask for a motion to approve those donations. So moved. Second. It's been a motion and second. Discussion? Without objection, the motion be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved. With our thanks. A donation of $35 from Stephen and Karen Justice for use for a scholarship for the Sandusky Rec Department's Color Me Pretty program in 2020. I ask for a motion to approve that donation. So moved. Second. Been a motion and second. Discussion? Without objection, the motion will be approved. And hearing no objection, the motion is approved. Well, our thanks for their support of that program. The Sandusky Recreation Department received funds in the amount of $106,000 representing an annual distribution from the Mylander Foundation in 2019. These funds are to be used as directed by the Sandusky City Commission for the purchase of trees and or plantings to be planted in and or structural improvements made to Sandusky Parks, Oakland Cemetery, or the Sandusky Recreation Area. I'd ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. And a motion and second. Discussion? Without objection, motion will be approved. Hear no objection. The motion is approved. Well, thanks. Thank you. Uh, moving on to new and old business, starting with the police department. Several members of the department participated in the Shop with the Hero program at Meyer with Children in the Rotary Clothe the Kid program. Both programs, uh, in both programs, officers partner with children that are in need for the holiday season. For Public Works, Erie County Regional Planning has completed the planning study for Cleveland Road, Butler Street, and Rye Beach Road. Please contact Engineering or Regional Planning if you'd like to schedule time to review the final documents at City Hall. Also, Barnes Nursery is still planting trees for the GLRI runoff reduction grant. Over 100 trees have been planted throughout the city since November 11th. The city received approval from the U.S. Forestry Service to plant trees at all of the boulevard locations on our current list. Those 60 trees will be planted in 2020 after appropriate species are selected. Also, because the cost of road salt increased so dramatically for 2020, staff has stockpiled as much material as possible at 2019 prices. And with winter on its way, we'd like to remind residents of a few precautionary steps to take to avoid frozen water lines inside and outside of their homes, including setting thermostats at 55 degrees minimum, insulating exposed pipes, and letting the cold water faucet trickle continuously during extreme, extreme cold weather events. Moving on to community development, the December 10th EDIC community has been canceled. The next scheduled committee for EDIC will be Tuesday, January 14th, 2020 at 1.30 p.m. in the City Commission Chambers. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the Planning Department, uh, just an announcement of several meetings, including the regular Planning Commission meeting scheduled for Wednesday, the January 22nd at 4.30 p.m. in the City Commission Chambers. Board of Zoning Appeals is scheduled for Thursday, January 16th, also in the City Commission Chambers. The Landmark Commission meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, January 15th at 4 p.m. in the Commission Chambers. And finally, the Arts and Culture Commission meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, January 21st at 5.15 p.m., also in the Commission Chambers. That concludes my remarks for this evening. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Whoops. There are questions for the City Manager. Mr. Sharon? Cool. I don't have any questions, but I did want to make a comment about the leaf pickup. Uh, the leaves have obviously fallen late this year, uh, and there's actually a lot of leaves still on the trees. But I did want to say, uh, pass on, that uh, the workers have done an exceedingly good job, at least in my neighborhood, M much more than I've seen in the last eight years. I mean, I, in, in terms of making sure that they clean up the gutters rather than just take what's off the 
off the curb and leave a mess on the gutters that are, is usually there. And, and I <clears throat> noted that as I drove through the city. Uh, it's I recognize that uh, everybody's neighborhood is not going to be perfect because there's cars parked on the street and it may becomes difficult. But I did take note that they have done an extremely uh, more detailed job than they've ever done, and I just wanted to pass that on. Tell them yeah. thank you. They've uh, it was no, I noticed it. If I could, uh, through Commissioner President Murray to Commissioner Poole, I actually had a citizen pull me aside specifically at an event to tell me how great Leaf Pickup has been this year. And I know Director Klein and his team have worked really hard to be prepared for that. And the weather did help us a little bit this year, but uh, it really has. I've seen I've seen those improvements in each year in the preparation. And I'm so thankful that you brought that up oh, yeah. tonight. Yeah. Mr. Whoopser, while we're talking about preparing for winter too, we might, we, we might pause to remind the residents regarding the obligations regarding shoveling sidewalks, I think within how many hours of daylight? I can't remember now. Um, anybody remember that one? Not off the top of my head. <laughs> well, maybe we'll provide we can, a reminder. We can put that somebody notice in the next meeting. Morning. Yeah, hopefully the it won't meeting. snow between now and then. So <laughs> we won't cite anybody during that period. <laughs> and, and, and to keep in mind the snow emergency routes, so those are all posted. Um, it becomes really tough for our snowplow crews and for our police officers and firefighters to get through. That's why those roads are marked as such. So um, we don't really want to think about having that much snow anytime soon, but it will be here before you know it. Um, and uh, let's just keep that in mind, please. Mr. Chairman, just, just one last comment about leaf pickup. Uh, as time goes on and the rest of these trees dump leaves, uh, you know, there'll be an inclination to kind of let it go. I, I think that it's worth the effort uh, going back through another time if the, if it's uh, possible to do that and uh, cleaning those leaves up because it, those are the kinds of details that people notice as they go through the community and I like as you go home well tomorrow when you drive look on the main streets and you and you can actually see the curb and if they're not filled with leaves uh, it's it's a big difference in terms of people's impression of the community it just shows that we're that we put the efforts in the details that make a difference in folks lives anything else for mr. Whoopser? Mr. Chairman, Wanneken. Uh, I'd, at some point uh, in the next couple weeks or month, I'd like to get with the city manager, maybe one or two other commissioners, uh, to increase dump day to three times a year. Because <coughs> uh, I know working it, it's uh, it's a beast, and we got a lot of stuff. I know uh, some area communities have where you can put large stuff out once a month, but I think if we went to three times a month, it would help beautify or keep the city a lot cleaner. I've noticed some tires out there again now. The recycling center has been looking tidy. I go out there. Uh, I haven't seen any problems out there. And I believe we've got the cameras out there now too, right? So I haven't seen anybody misusing that. So Great. We can talk internally. Mr. Chairman, if, if Mr. Boddington is finished, uh, they finished? Oh, I've been done. Okay, just to make sure. Um, <laughs> do you, uh, is there... Any status on recycling? Is there, how are we doing as far as recycling as, as we go? Do we need another dumpster? Are we okay? Anything? Yeah, through you, Mr. President. We uh, analyzed the uh, last month, I think it was most of November, maybe the end of October, um, to figure out how many vehicles. We're still trying to figure all of that information out, but the collection has been very good. Um, the site has been very clean. I think it helps a lot having staff there uh, on a regular basis because people tend not to dump while we have the people there. So that site has been uh, in, in very good shape. We've been very happy with it. And people are uh, respecting the signs that are up as well. But we're not in need of an additional dumpster at this point. Okay. Additional questions for the city manager. Not, then we will turn to items of old business. Anyone having items of old business? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Brady. Perhaps this would fall under old business. Uh, we, had a, we had a question regarding uh, that our property, it's now our property at uh, Warren and uh, Monroe Street. A couple of meetings ago, I was asked this question by Mr. Lamarca and also by the neighbor there, Attorney Ron Kaufman, regarding the poor quality of the fill. I, I went to Mr. Lasco with that question, who's, that's his project, and he was already had, uh, had uh, uh, it was in motion with approaching the contractor and uh, <coughs> placing that fill. Uh, those two residents were absolutely right. That fill was horrible. It looked like it came out of a 
looked like it came out of a foundation of a basement somewhere is what it looked like. And uh, I believe now we've replaced that or her in the process of replacing that with truly clean fill. And uh, thanks to both those residents for, uh, for bringing that to our attention. But the point I'm making is that Mr. Lasko was, uh, was in the process of taking care of that. So good, good job, Mr. Lasko, and thanks to the residents both. Any other items of uh, old business? Any items of new business? If not, then we will turn to audience participation. Mr. Lamarco, you look like you're the sole survivor tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great day then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, come on. <laughs> well, uh, then the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Stand adjourned. Oh.